everyone, my name is Jason Collins and I'm with URL Insurance Group. I'm an agent support specialist here at URL specializing in single premium life products. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Those of you that are currently doing business with URL, I'd like to personally thank you. We understand that there are many options as to where you place your business. That's why we appreciate you working with URL and will promise to continue our dedication to your success. Some of you are new to the URL family. Welcome. URL is a full service national broker. We provide agents complete support in all of our lines. URL provides single premium life, fixed and indexed annuities, traditional life products, as well as individual and group health products. We also have a senior division that offers MedSup and MedAdvantage. So please take a moment after the webinar to tour our website at www.urlinsgroup.com and discover if there are any additional avenues for URL to assist with your success. Again, that website is www.urlinsgroup.com. I'm extremely excited to be part of presenting this great program for you today. Single Premium Life has been growing in popularity the past few years. People, and more specifically baby boomers, are realizing that they have cash value in old whole life policies that they don't want to continue to pay into, have money that is set aside and earmarked for the next generation making little or no interest in CDs or savings accounts, or have real concerns about their future with regards to long-term care should they need it. Today we're going to discuss a product that will help your clients with these concerns. I'm proud to introduce John Thomas with Nationwide Insurance. John is Nationwide's virtual wholesaler for LTC sales. He's here to review Nationwide's Care Matter single premium life product and to discuss how it will benefit your clients. Now before I turn it over to John, I'd like to mention should you have any questions during the broadcast, there's a question box on the right side of your screen that you can type them in and we will answer the questions at the end of the program. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the program over to John. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. I appreciate the introduction and uh, appreciate the opportunity to share with you all this afternoon. Uh, as we get started here and I'm setting up my screen to share with you, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background on Nationwide. And uh, Jason mentioned me. I'm John Thomas. And I've been with the company for about eight years uh, in, in different sales capacities with our life insurance uh, division and also our long-term care sales team. Uh, the product I'm going to share with you today is a new product for Nationwide. Uh, we introduced the product about two years ago, uh, but really started actively marketing uh, the product about a year. Um, it is Nationwide Your Life Care Matters, and it is a linked benefit or single premium long-term care product, as Jason mentioned. Uh, many of you know Nationwide and our brand. You probably have seen a commercial or two of Nationwide, and you know we have a large property and casualty business that we specialize in homeowners and auto insurance uh, uh, and several other types of insurance. You may have seen uh, some of our commercials with Peyton Manning and know our jingle. Uh, but you may not know that we are also a uh, financial business. Um, we're, we're quite a large financial business growing in that space, and we've been in the long-term care planning business as well for about 16 years. Uh, we were one of the first life insurance carriers to introduce a long-term care product uh, just after 2000, uh, one that is a qualified long-term care linked to life insurance. Uh, and so that has been the market that Nationwide has been in for some time. Uh, we are a Fortune 100 company. Actually, as of last year, we're about 89 on the Fortune 100 list. To give you a perspective of our size, we're a, a tad bigger than Nike, McDonald's, and a few other uh, large companies you're familiar with. So that gives you a perspective on our size, and we are a mutual company, uh, which gives us a, a huge benefit in that we're beholden to our policyholders. Uh, we don't have stock investment, and so that gives us the ability to really manage uh, our company in the best interest of our policyholders uh, and not necessarily managing to, uh, to stock or performance. Um, as you see here on our screen, I want to walk through a brief agenda with you. And I will uh, get a little bit into long-term care and the importance of having long-term care coverage. Uh, for those of you that are 
you know, uh, active in the long-term care mar market. You probably know some of these statistics I'll share with you. Uh, but it will be a good review and, and good setup for our product discussion and really where the opportunity is with this new solution. Uh, for those of you that you maybe aren't as familiar, this, this will be some good information as you enter into the long-term care planning conversation. Also, Care Matters, our product, how does it work? Why is it different? Um, you may have heard terms like indemnity or reimbursement, but really don't know at the end of the day what that means. There is a, a huge value to what we call an indemnity benefit payout. Um, and, and I'm going to explore with you a little bit of, of really the impact that will make to your clients. Uh, some sales positioning and, and a brief talking point around high net worth clients and preparing for long-term care. Now, for those of you that have been in the long-term care planning market for some time, you probably heard this statistic. 70% of folks uh, living beyond the age 65 will need some sort of long-term care, right? That comes right out of the 2015 Medicare handbook, but it's been a st statistic that's been in the, in the uh, market for some time. Uh, but for our clients, what we know and what we realize is that clients don't really identify with risk pools, right? Uh, if you say 70% of, of people are going to need some sort of long-term care and you're like me, well, I'm that 30%. Shoot, I, I work out maybe once a month or every other month. I'm not going to need long-term care, right? <laughs> That's what most of our clients think. Um, but for individual clients, it is either a zero or 100% chance that you'll need some sort of coverage. When we think of other sorts of insurance, uh, homeowner's insurance, uh, auto insurance, right? Uh, if you are to have some sort of collision, if your home receives some sort of damage, you cannot afford not to be covered, right? The risk of that catastrophic expense happening is so huge, uh, that cost is so big, you cannot afford not to be covered. Well, long-term care preparation is much the same. The cost of long-term care, in, in some cases, can be so catastrophic, we really can't afford not to prepare. The impact that it'll have on our retirement, the impact it'll have on our lifestyle at the end of life or at the uh, later stage of our retirement is so huge we can't afford not to prepare, right? Now, there are a couple of ways that we can prepare. Lifestyle is really just the uh, a family or loved ones providing care for us later in our life. So it's providing care through our lifestyle or through our loved ones. There's also income. Uh, we can pray for some sort of long-term care, maybe a, a nurse coming into the house a few days a week or uh, some sort of assisted living scenario, but we pay for it out of our income, whether that's qualified retirement income that we have coming in, uh, assets and investments that we've saved, but we're paying for it out of our assets and income. Uh, and that final way we, we pay for long-term care is insurance. We can leverage insurance in a cost-efficient manner using current dollars to provide a benefit for us down the road. Now, there are a few interesting statistics I'd like to highlight here. Um, you see that first bullet point, senior, senior caregivers are more likely to be seniors who need care. Forty percent of senior caregivers predecease the person they're caring for. So there is a huge cost, and, and this is really speaking to spouses that care for one another. Uh, more commonly, it is a, a female spouse that cares for her husband. Uh, and the burden, both emotionally and physically, is so huge that it does cause 40% uh, of those female caregivers to predecease the person they're caring for because of that emotional toll it takes. Uh, the average unpaid caregiver is a middle-aged woman who works or did work full-time but loses on average 565000 in lost wages and benefits. Either they have to quit a job or reduce hours. Maybe they have to move back to their hometown to be near, near their parents to care for them. Uh, this is most commonly an adult daughter that does the care. Uh, and, and this is a huge issue uh, with family. And, and for those of you that have had this experience in your family, you know the burden that it puts on family members when they have to provide care uh, for one another or for parents. So that's a staggering statistic. Uh, one of the things when we're preparing for long-term care that we don't often think about um, is what income and assets really are intended or used for. Uh, so as we're having a planning conversation, and if you've had this conversation with clients, 
uh, they may say, well, you know what, I've, I've been diligent, I've, I've saved, I have uh, sufficient income coming in or assets set aside, so I'll just pay for this sort of care out of pocket when, when the time comes, right? Uh, but what they're not thinking about is that those assets they have set aside create income, right? Whether it's a, a retirement plan uh, or, or investment that they intend to take an income stream off of, those assets create income. And so the question is, do you have enough income coming off of those assets to maintain the retirement lifestyle that you intend to maintain and also pay for some sort of care? Because the cost of that care will significantly impact your lifestyle if you have her prepared adequately. And if you start to draw down those assets, are, are, are you going to have enough to draw down the asset and maintain the level of income you need to, to maintain? Uh, if if those assets are not used for income, commonly they're intended as inheritance, right? Whatever is not needed for income, we, we plan to pass along. Do we want to use that asset early to pay for care if it's necessary and not have any inheritance to pass along? So that is certainly a question to discuss with our clients. Uh, there are a couple of types of, long, uh, of insurance that we can use to plan for long-term care. Traditionally, uh, you'll see on that left-hand side, traditional LTC insurance. This has been the long-term care insurance that's been in the market for, for quite some time, several decades. Actually, when it was first introduced, it was known as a nursing home insurance. Uh, and that's, that's commonly stuck with traditional long-term care insurance and the perspective that, that clients and consumers have about long-term care insurance. That, you know, I'm, I'm not going to buy long-term care insurance. I, why would I? I don't want to go to a nursing home, right? Uh, we immediately think of nursing home when we look at traditional long-term care insurance, and that's kind of been the stigma that that product has had in the market. Uh, there's also long-term care riders on life insurance. Uh, so this is a newer product, the hybrid product I mentioned nationwide has been in this space for the last 15 or 16 years. So this hybrid LTC life insurance product's been around for about 15, 16 years. Um, it is less customizable than traditional long-term care insurance, but it also is guaranteed, typically. Uh, so premiums are guaranteed. One of the challenges the traditional long-term care insurance space had, it was very much like auto or homeowner's insurance, that a premium was paid on a monthly or annual basis to give a benefit pool. Uh, but it was very early, uh, uh, well, the, the long-term care experience uh, and the claims experience when they were initially pricing these products was very, very much unknown. Uh, and so as time went, as healthcare costs increased, as I got a better idea of, of what that claim was going to look like and the cost of a claim, insurance premiums went up dramatically. Uh, I, I've seen insurance premiums with, with these type of policies go up 40 to 60 percent year over year, which is very challenging for folks that expect to maintain a certain uh, monthly premium. That final category, and this is the product we're talking about today, the linked benefit contract, or LTC, asset-based care is what it's also known as. It's a little more customizable. It is intended for long-term care, although it does have a life insurance component, and the premiums are also guaranteed. It's known as an asset-based product because it is designed to be paid up in a single pay or a short type of pay scenario, either a five-year or 10-year payment structure. Um, that single pay can often be paid out of assets set aside, whether it's a CD, and Jason uh, mentioned this early on, whether it's a CD or, or other investment that's set aside, we can re reposition in sort of, inside of a product like this to prepare and leverage our long-term care benefit. Um, we say reposition because many of these products maintain liquidity. So it's not necessarily expense because the, the products offer a return of premium feature. That return of premium says that if you cancel the contract, you're going to get everything you paid into it back. Uh, and so the product does maintain a level of liquidity. It also gives us a benefit that gives us death benefit if we never need long-term care. So it kind of addresses the concern that I'm going to spend money on something or I'm going to put an asset inside of an, an investment vehicle that I never end up needing long-term care. I'm not going to get anything out of it. Right? That's sometimes the, the fear of these sort of products. Well, it does have death benefit. It's built on a UL chassis uh, and does have death benefit if we don't end up needing the long-term care. 
this next slide here is going to give you an idea of, of the product structure, how it works, and also an idea of pricing. So I'll walk you through a brief example on a 55-year-old female, couple rate at non-tobacco. Now I say couple rate, we do price the product at either single or couple. And you get a couple discount, essentially, if you are married or in a domestic partnership. And the idea there is that if you are married, uh, and statistics bear this out, that if you're married, you're going to claim long-term care later in life because you have a loved one that, uh, in most cases, is helping you out along the way in those early stages of, of frailty, really, in, in your elderly age. And, and so we give a discount if you are married. So at this 55-year-old couple rate, we have 100000 that we reposition in this product and immediately gives us 180419 of death benefit. Additional pool available for long-term care of 360838 so that we have a total LTC benefit of 541257 And that breaks down into a monthly LTC benefit of 7517 you see here. And that monthly benefit pays out over six years. So the policy structure is broken out into two pools. There is a total benefit pool available for long-term care. In this example, it's 541000 But that initial bucket you see there of 180000 represents the death benefit. If you are to use at least 180000 of long-term care, then you burn through that initial death benefit pool. So once you use that death benefit pool, the remaining bucket is available only for long-term care. Now, we do have what we call a residual or bonus death benefit available as well. Uh, in the gold box here below, you'll see residual death benefit at 20%, $36,083 in this case. So if you use a benefit above 180000 or beyond this initial death benefit pool that we have available, we guarantee that when the client passes away, we're going to pay out at least this 36083 So you do have the, the opportunity to get 541257 plus 36000 in death benefit if you were to fully exhaust the policy. What we found in, in a lot of our research with long-term care contracts, especially hybrid products, is that if you have a costly claim experience, maybe uh, someone that has Alzheimer's or dementia, and they have a long-term care need uh, it, 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 for, for seven, eight, nine years. Those become quite costly. And if you use the entire benefit in your long-term care policy, you're probably going to use a lot of your personal assets as well. And so it becomes pretty important to have a final expense policy tied to this benefit, and one that's strong at 20%. Uh, many of our uh, com competitors and other uh, products in the market have about a 5% residual death benefit. So we offered one that's a bit stronger. The benefit that's paid, that 7517 you see there that's paid out on, month on a monthly basis, is paid out in cash. We happen to have the only cash indemnity benefit payout in the market with these type of products. Uh, that is compared to a reimbursement benefit. Uh, a reimbursement benefit is one where you have a benefit available to you, and if you ex have that level of cost, you file a claim, you submit bills and receipts, you, you send that to the insurance company, they approve it, uh, and then send you a check for what your cost was. Uh, you can get back up to your cost until it exceeds that maximum benefit that you have available. The cash indemnity product is a different in that uh, the, the insurance company doesn't approve e every individual expense. On a monthly basis, once you are approved based on your need for long-term care, we automatically will send you that cash benefit and we'll send you the full benefit on a monthly basis. That second bullet point you see there, optional benefit banking. That is a supplemental uh, money market account that's tied to the policy in the nationwide bank that you have available to you. Because it is a cash benefit, you might have a benefit that's larger than your expenses. And you can certainly save that excess benefit in your personal checking, your savings account, uh, but you can also put it in the nationwide money market account if, if you choose. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind, 
Uh, some people would prefer not to have some excess cash laying around in their personal checking account. You know, it might slowly disappear, right? <laughs> so we have that kind of out of sight, out of, out of mind account available for you. Uh, informal caregiving is unique. That third bullet point there. Uh, informal caregiving means that family, friend, spouse, neighbor, uh, friend at church, you name it, this benefit could pay a family member or a friend or someone informally to provide care. Uh, this is unique to this product as well. And that is the only product that would pay an informal caregiver. Uh, other contracts that are reimbursement do require qualified caregiving. In many cases, a licensed or qualified long-term care uh, facility or a nurse has to be providing the care. Uh, because this is a cash benefit, we have zero restriction on who that benefit can be paid to. And so once you qualify and trigger that LTC monthly income, you can make that payment to whoever. So that initial statistic I gave you that uh, the average caregiver is a, is a female daughter, or, or excuse me, a daughter, middle-aged daughter, uh, that provides care for her parents and loses about 565000 of income over her lifetime providing that care. Uh, family members can now take their long-term care benefit and reimburse their daughter or pay their daughter uh, for some of her loss providing that care. So that is huge. And I, and I mentioned the 20% guaranteed minimum residual death benefit as well. Now I said that these products maintain liquidity. Uh, there is a five-year vested schedule. So if you're going to cancel the contract within five years, you don't get 100% back. But you'll see here this graph. You cancel the contract year one, you get 85% of what you paid into it back. And that increases by 3% each year. So after the fifth year, if you were to cancel the contract, you get everything back. There are also five and 10 pay options. And those work a little bit differently. Uh, if you're to cancel the contract, the year following your final payment, that is when you have the guaranteed return of premium in effect. So for example, if you make five annual payments, day one of year six, if you cancel the contract, you get everything back. Uh, with the 10 pay, day one of year 11, you cancel the contract, you get everything back. Within those first five or 10 years, if you were to cancel it inside your payment uh, period, then there would be a surrender charge applied. Now another thing to highlight with our cash indemnity product, there are, I mentioned there are absolutely no restrictions on services. You can use informal caregivers, even family members, uh, as long as they're laid out in a plan of care. Uh, another unique thing that's, that's created here is it can pay the owner of the policy. Uh, for our wealthier clients, our wealthier individuals, we can structure this product inside of an irrevocable life insurance trust or an islet. And so that creates quite a unique opportunity. Uh, I mentioned no monthly bills or receipts are needed to collect benefit. And we will pay beyond the HIPAA cap. For those of you familiar with uh, the, the, the HIPAA uh, stipulation, there is an annual exclusion. This year it's 10200 monthly. That is uh, allowed tax-free from a qualified long-term care product. So we can receive up to 10200 this year tax-free without any concern. We will pay beyond that 10200 this year if you received a benefit beyond, as long as you have qualifying long-term care expenses beyond that HIPAA allowance, it is still tax-free. Now, if you choose just to receive that benefit as income, well, anything above the 10200 you receive as income, not for a qualified expense, is subject to potential taxation. Uh, there are no approvals needed from the insurance company with this indemnity benefit. And so that would also allow for you to use some of that cash to modify your home. Maybe you want to stay in your home for as long as possible, and so you use some of this cash as a, a build a wheelchair ramp or modify your kitchen and bathroom to make that possible. It could create uh, uh, income for transportation costs or prescriptions, other medical expenses that wouldn't typically be covered under normal long-term care contracts. Now I want to walk through uh, a comparison with you, and this is where we start to get into the, the opportunity that an indemnity benefit creates. Uh, and this is in contrast to the products that have been available in the market so far, uh, the reimbursement type contracts. Uh, I mentioned a few statistics early on. I, well, I want to give you a few more. 70% uh, of claims are for home health care. 
a majority of people want to stay in their home for as long as possible, right? And so a majority of our, home, uh, our claims in the long-term care industry are for home health care. I'm using a uh, $3,000 monthly long-term care cost in this scenario. Uh, years of research on claim payouts across the industry uh, show us that the average claim, the average claim payout from the long-term care contract is about four years. It's 3.9 to be exact. And so we use that figure in this example uh, of a four-year claim. Uh, and actually, another interesting statistic about uh, 85% of all claims are less than five years. So to put that into perspective, 85% of all claims for long-term care are less than five years. So your average claim period, or really what we're looking at, is between four and six years. And so if you've seen uh, or done long-term care planning, you know that four and six years are commonly uh, the most attractive or sold long-term care benefit for that reason. Uh, but in this example, we're looking at a claim and how would a claim pay out, uh, comparing a reimbursement contract versus indemnity contract. Uh, and as I've been talking about benefits here, indemnity benefits, you're probably thinking, well, shoot, they've got to be more expensive if you're paying cash versus a company that's only going to reimburse you for cost, right? Well, <laughs> you're exactly right. From an actuary standpoint, it's much more costly to insure an indemnity contract because we guarantee we're going to pay the entire benefit. So we're on the hook or we're liable for a lot more of the benefit that we promise than a company that reimburses only expenses, right? That company knows that uh, regardless of the benefit that they offer, statistically, they're only going to pay what the average cost of care happens to be. And so with reimbursement contracts uh, throughout the last few decades, there, there have been a lot of money left on the table with the insurance company that isn't in, it doesn't end up getting paid out. Uh, but that being said, I, I want to walk through a claim and show you how they'd pay out. So we're, we're just using easy numbers here, but let's say our reimbursement contract offers us $6,000 a month in, in LTC benefit, and our indemnity contract offers us $5,000 a month. Well, right off the bat, you're thinking, well, that's a $1,000 a month difference, right? The reimbursement contract's probably better. Well, if we think about how that would actually pay out, our expense is only $3,000 a month in this example I gave you. So at $3,000 a month, over four years, our reimbursement policy pays us $144,000. The indemnity contract you see on the right here pays us our full $5,000 a month, even though our cost is only $3,000. Uh, there's a little caveat here you see with first three months. Our indemnity policy does have a what they call a 90-day elimination period or a three-month elimination calendar day elimination period that after three months the benefit is triggered and begins. So once we file our claim, we have to wait for three months and our, our benefit begins. Uh, so over 45 months, that three months paying zero, at the full $5,000 a month, we get $225,000 out of the policy. I'm going to take that a bit further. Using the same example, what we know about aging and the, the care need with, with elderly is that the, the, this claim or the care need is progressive. It, it's not an easy $3,000 a month for four years, right? Most often, as we, we age and we become frail, the care need really looks like an hour or two of care a day. Right, it begins with maybe just a little bit of help getting dressed in the morning, maybe a little bit of help bathing and some help around the house. So that might be an hour or two of day that, that someone needs help. And that's a pretty inexpensive claim. And then as, as time progresses over three, four, five years, that care need advances, right? It progresses so that after five years, you may need round-the-clock custodial care as, as your needs really progress. And so it goes from being very inexpensive to more costly down the road. Uh, but in those early years of the contract, when you're your need is pretty inexpensive, you can get your full benefit and, and bank it away or save the cash. Uh, so let's say in the same example that we didn't pass away after four years, but we needed to go to a nursing home for an additional year because we need round-the-clock custodial care, right? And that nursing home might be $9,000 a month for a semi-private room. And at $9,000 a month in our reimbursement contract, which offered us $6,000, 
we are short $3,000 a month. Now we're going to get, continue to get reimbursed our $6,000 a month, but we'll have to come out of pocket that $3,000 a month or $36,000 for the year. So we're out of pocket $36,000 for the year. Our indemnity contract, or excuse me, I said $3,000. Our reimbursement offers us six, yes, and and uh, our cost is nine, so we are out of pocket $36,000. Our indemnity contract offers us $5,000 a month, and so we're out of pocket $4,000 a month with the indemnity contract, right? But we've been able to sock away 81000 in benefit over the first four years of the policy when it was less expensive. And so all of the shortfall can be paid out of this money that we were able to bank or able to sock away. And so in actuality, we don't come out of pocket at all. We've been able to advance our benefit early on in the policy and use our cash to pay for the, the more costly year of the nursing home. Not only that, we'll still have cash left over in that final year. We'll have cash left over uh, to, to maybe buy that Corvette we've wanted, you know, shortly before we die, or, or pass along, create a, a death benefit to our heirs. Uh, so there's some opportunity when we have that cash that we've been able to advance out of our policy early when the, the claim is less expensive. Now a couple other notes on informal caregiving. Uh, really what, what uh, I want to highlight here, because I've mentioned that you know, it, it, it is a uh, restriction on the, the benefit. So we, we will not restrict the benefit in any way, um, and you can use it however you like. Uh, one other thing to highlight, it does create a quite simple claim. Uh, if you're familiar with long-term care claims process, there are a few things that are involved. The first is that you have to trigger the benefit by having a, a doctor certify that you can't complete two out of six activities of daily living. Those activities of daily living are things like uh, eating on your own, bathing, dressing, uh, continence. Uh, those are those activities of living. And if the doctor says you can't do two of those things, that qualifies you for the benefit. The, the other part of qualification is a plan of care. Okay. And typically with a long-term care contract, a plan of care must involve proof of loss which means that you have paid for care out of pocket, you, you can show some loss, uh, and you have a plan that involves qualified caregivers. And so that proof of loss and the plan of care with qualified caregivers is part of the claims process, which can take some time. Uh, this indemnity benefit, because it's cash, does not require qualified caregivers, and it does not require proof of loss. And simply stating that the plan of care is informal caregiving. It can be very uh, simple. It's not specific. You don't have to say, you know, my, my spouse will care for me 10% of the time, my brother 15% of the time, and other family members the rest. Nope, just saying informal caregiving is the plan, and that is sufficient. So it makes the claims process quite easy. I want to walk you through another example, and this gets into some price comparison with some of the other products available in the market. But what I'll highlight here is gross cost versus net cost. And when you're talking to clients that have significant assets set aside, maybe they have um, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in CDs, or they've got an IRA that they don't need for income, right? and they have this money set aside, there are uh, uh, really two things that people that have assets set aside intend to do with those assets. If they don't need them for income, and I can tell you if they're you know, in their late 60s, 70s, and they haven't started using it for income, they probably don't intend or need it for income, right? Uh, and so it becomes an in-case-of fund or an emergency fund, right, that in, in case something happens, I have this money set aside. Well, what is the emergency that normally happens to those that are retired and elderly? The, the two biggest concerns, first, is long-term care, right, that I, I may age and need some s sort of help or care. And so that's the, the first concern. The second is medical cost. And so if we look at a, a long-term care policy, that answers the first question. If we look at a cash benefit like Care Matters, we can use some of that cash benefit to pay for our medical costs. So that helps address some of the other questions, right? Uh, and then if we don't need it for an emergency, people intend to pass that money along. It's like, okay, if it doesn't end up being used for an emergency, I plan to pass it on to my kids. And so it is used as an inheritance. Well, th this long-term care contract we have 
uh, offers a death benefit. But what I want to highlight is that many people that are in this position do have concern with their net estate, right? Because they intend to use this money that's set aside to pass along, they are concerned with their estate and the cost of their estate. So it's not all about upfront expense. And so when we're comparing products, we have to look at the net cost to that client's estate and not just the initial cost. Uh, you see here we have Nationwide Care Matters with Lincoln Money Guard and Pacific Life Premier Care. These are uh, two other products in the market. For an equivalent benefit, we compared a 60-year-old at 540,000 of total long-term care benefits. So these are apples to apples, similar benefits. Uh, the nationwide product will cost us 120,000, 179. You see Lincoln at 117,669 and Pacific Life at 133,738. Well, looking at nationwide care matters in Lincoln. It's a, it's a couple thousand more for the nationwide product, right? But when you take into account that 20% death benefit that I mentioned a few slides ago, 36,000, versus 5% with Lincoln and a flat $5,000 of Pacific Life, the net cost to Care Matters is significantly less than Lincoln or, or Pacific. Because that death, with that stronger uh, death benefit, we have some cost recovery. We get some of that death benefit back to us. And, and so our, our cost to our state is less. Uh, now, full disclosure, Lincoln does have a 80% return of premium option. So this is their 100%. Their 80% return of premium option is a little bit less. This would bring their upfront premium probably to $106,000, $107,000 versus $117,000. And the net cost in that case would be similar. It would be close. And, and I would say if we're looking at similar net cost to our state, would you be willing to put 15% maybe more upfront for the value of the flexibility of the indemnity or cash benefit plus the likelihood that you, you'll get more out of it because you are getting cash for versus being reimbursed your cost. When we were uh, developing this, this product, uh, there, there have been hybrid or linked benefit products that have been in the market for, for about 15, 20 years. Uh, for some time, and we were slow in developing a linked benefit product because we really wanted to watch the traditional long-term care marketplace and how it developed. Um, and we've seen that really shrink from about a, a billion dollar opportunity in the market to about uh, 50 million in sales last year with traditional long-term care. Uh, but the hybrid, the life insurance and long-term care market has grown quite a bit over the same amount of time. Uh, and Nationwide really sees that this hybrid or the linked benefit product is the future of the long-term care insurance market. We see the opportunity here growing uh, substantially, especially as Jason mentioned, as the baby boomers uh, start to retire and start to enter this second phase of their lifestyle. Uh, so the opportunity here is huge. Uh, there were a couple of questions when we were planning the product that came out of conversations uh, planning. We, we actually put together a panel of, of clients and consumers and advisors uh, as well as agents talking about uh, the claim experience, talking about product design and really what people get out of their product. Uh, indemnity was one of those things that came out as, as a huge desire in the market, a cash indemnity product. Also one that paid family members that provided informal care. Uh, and we developed three important questions out of that, that conversation time. The first was, where do you want to receive care? We often uh, you know, present products when we're meeting with people and cl clients pre preparing or planning for long-term care. Uh, but there is opportunity to ask a few more questions. We can paint a picture and, and not just say, hey, we need to prepare for the eventuality of long-term care or nursing home. right? We can paint a picture. We can say, hey, we, we've got to be honest. We all age. right? We all become frail. And in your retirement or that second phase of your retirement lifestyle, what do you want that picture to look like? Let's, let's paint a picture of what we want our retirement lifestyle to look like, right? Where do we want to receive care? If we end up needing some sort of care as we, as we become frail, as we age, where do we want to receive that care? Many people will tell you at home. Okay, great. You want to stay at home for as long as possible. How, how do we make that happen? How do we make that possible? Who do you want to care for you is that second question. Uh, many people will say, hey, I, you know, if possible, I don't want my family members to have to care for me as I age. 
right? I, I want to spare my family that, that burden of caring for me. I'd love to be able to pay for care if possible to help me stay in my home for as long as possible. And would you prefer to be paid in cash each month or have your LTC expenses reimbursed? Uh, so this question kind of leads into an opportunity where I think the long-term care market has, has missed. Um, many people are, are not as, uh, or don't find a reimbursement type of insurance policy as appealing as a cash benefit. Right, and many people have not been presented a cash benefit to prepare for long-term care. When you start to talk to clients that have significant assets and investments set aside, we have investment-minded individuals. And as you start to have that long-term care planning conversation and say, hey, look, what, let's plan for this long-term care thing, and they agree and say, okay, great, I'd love to look at it. Well, what's it going to cost me? That's a huge question, and so you start to look at different projections for 15, 20 years down the road. And depending on where you look, you can see projections at anywhere from three, four, five thousand dollars a month to twenty-five thousand dollars a month, depending on what type of care we're planning on and what sort of uh, inflation uh, uh, assumptions we're making. The projections are pretty much all over the place, right? And beyond that, the client doesn't know what their their cost is going to be. And so we introduce a lot of uncertainty and a lot of variables in this planning conversation. And those variables, in a lot of cases, have turned clients off. They, they've turned prospects and potential clients off because they don't know what they're really going to get out of the insurance policy. I don't know what my cost is, and so therefore I don't know what I'm going to be reimbursed or what the policy will pay me. But when you start to say, hey, we've actually got a, a, an opportunity here that is more like an investment than an insurance policy. Most insurance policies, if you think auto or homeowners, they reimburse you for loss, right? But this is a contract that's guaranteeing to pay you income on a monthly basis, regardless of your loss, regardless of your cost. And for those investment-minded individuals who see guaranteed return on investment, this, this solution is a lot more appealing. It creates an opportunity where you say, hey, you know, the, the, the statistics tell us you probably will need some sort of care. And when you're able to trigger that care, when you need that care, this investment is going to give you guaranteed income to meet the needs of those care, of that care. So it is, it's a, a new solution that really is creating a lot of opportunity. Uh, I want to give you a quick example or some highlights of uh, who the product is really good for. Um, the, these two categories here, retirees with IRAs, I'm going to highlight these. Um, Retirees with IRAs, annuities, or other income. Uh, these are folks that have maybe RMDs. They, they have an IRA, they're 70 and a half, and they have to take that required minimum distribution, right? Um, and, and so these are folks that if they're forced to take a minimum withdrawal from their IRA, they don't need it for income. And if they haven't planned for, for long-term care, there's a good opportunity to take uh, some of that income from their IRA and, and pay a long-term care policy over five or ten years. So that's a fantastic opportunity. This other category are folks that really are not marketed to a whole lot because they're young, 40 to 55. We call them Henry's, high earners not rich yet. Um, that high earners not rich yet are really folks that have great income. They have excess annual liquidity, but they're young. And so uh, the insurance is going to be inexpensive compared to someone that is in their 60s or 70s. And so we can plan early get insurance at a much less expensive cost uh, and, and really leverage our current dollars for long-term care benefit. And these are folks that may have experience providing care to a parent or grandparent. So really understand the value and the need. Uh, but where we've lost these high earners um, that have annual liquidity, that they have that excess annual liquidity, they're also investing, they're also saving for retirement, right? Um, and, and so they have a long time horizon before retirement. They also have a long time before potential long-term care. Uh, and when we don't know and can't project very well what our cost is going to be down the road, these folks really aren't willing to commit. But when, when you can show them a, an investment that gives them a cash benefit of guaranteed income for long-term care, it, it introduces a new opportunity to, these, uh, to this category of investors. This is a simple example many of you probably have seen, but it it's just highlights the power of leverage in, in insurance. 
if we compare a CD versus our Care Matters product. In a CD, if we invest $100,000 for a 60-year-old at 88 or over 28 years at a 3% rate of return, which for a CD is pretty generous, right? You're going to have 228,793 at 88 over 28 years, and that doesn't consider tax on the interest. It would take 52 years to get to about 465,000. On the same 60-year-old, our Care Matters product, 100,000 is immediately leveraged to about 473,000 that we can use for long-term care. It also has that bonus death benefit I mentioned of 31,531. So that really is a power of leverage. And if we have someone that doesn't need this for income, they don't need that CD that's sitting in the bank, then we can reposition it in this Care Matters product and maintain liquidity. That if they can hold it for five years, which they probably would be doing if it's in a CD anyway, and they change their mind in six, seven years, they can cancel it and get their money back. So the risk is minimal, right? So that is a fantastic illustration on the power of insurance. In this last slide here, what does it mean for an affluent client to self-insure? Uh, and this is really for folks that work with the high net worth. And when I say high net worth, these are folks that have maybe five, 10 million or more of assets and are concerned with estate taxes. Uh, I'm going to go through this just briefly to, to, to plant the seed of the idea. If you have questions on it, I'd be more than happy to go uh, a little bit deeper with you one-on-one. Uh, but the, the gist of the idea is that those that are subject to estate taxes potentially are going to pay as much as 40% in estate taxes on their assets that are within their estate, right? And so if we're uh, planning and we're doing well planning for a long-term care need, we may set aside some money out of our investments liquid that we can have access to, some cash we'll access to to pay for that sort of care. So we're doing this planning and we set aside a million dollars liquid to cover that sort of LT, LTC or long-term care cost and we don't ever end up needing it. Well, we're, we're absolutely lucky, right? We didn't have to uh, be in a position to need care. We're absolutely lucky and we're going to pay the government $400,000 on that million. That's a 40% estate tax on our million dollars we set aside. Well, if the cost of being lucky is $400,000, what if we can uh, leverage an insurance product to lessen our tax burden? What if we take some of that $400,000 and place it inside of a trust, inside of an irrevocable life insurance trust? We move it out of our estate, so we remove it out of that estate tax liability, and we invest it inside the islet, inside this Care Matters product. We could potentially leverage that two or three hundred thousand dollars, whatever we choose to, to use, uh, three, four, five, or six times for long-term care benefit. So that long-term care benefit, when we need care, if we need care, is going to pay our trust and grow the size of our trust outside of the estate tax burden, right? So it's growing our estate, uh, our trust outside of our estate, so it avoids the estate tax. And then as we're paying for care out of our estate, we're further reducing our liability as we pay for long-term care costs or medical costs out of our liquid assets. So it's a fantastic idea for some tax arbitrage for those wealthier clients. And if they don't need long-term care, then their estate uh, or their trust gets paid the death benefit out of the Care Matters policy, which further uh, helps their trust grow and limits their tax liability. We've got some fantastic uh, detailed information on this idea that uh, if you're interested, I'd be happy to send you. So I'd like to say, you know, when considering or thinking about our product, the Care Matters cash product, don't think about uh, exactly the buckets and the size of the buckets, but how the benefit is paid and how important cash can be. Because this product does give us a different way to ensure long-term care with return of premium if it's canceled and cash indemnity benefit that is guaranteed to pay a full monthly LTC benefit. It also allows informal and family caregivers and pays a strong benefit. Uh, so appreciate the opportunity to share with you. Uh, that was a, a brief overview of some of the, the ideas and opportunities this product can present. I'd love to uh, spend a few minutes answering any questions if there are uh, questions here at the end of the call. John, there are. John, yes. you there? Thank you. Yeah, that here. was very great. Yeah, that was great and very informative. I specifically like the piece on the indemnity benefits versus the reimbursement payments and residual death benefit 
part. Uh, there are a few questions here, uh, if, if you have a couple moments. Barbara yeah. asks, Barbara asked, is there taxes if you need care and do not need all of the benefit you are sent by the policy? Good question, Barbara. Yes. So the uh, HIPAA tax exclusion uh, does give us a, a, an exclusion on the amount that we can receive tax-free. Um, you may have heard me mention 10200 is the current exclusion, that as long as we receive less than 10200 regardless of our cost, none of it's taxable. Now, uh, in that 10200 that that HIPAA amount is uh, indexed for inflation, so it actually increases every year. Uh, 10 years from now, or 15 years from now, that amount might be 15000 That's That's uh, available tax-free. But as long as we're receiving less than that amount, uh, we have no income tax consideration. Uh, if we were to receive above the 10200 this year, let's say, uh, we received 15000 maybe our cost was 10000 Well, then the additional five we're receiving could be subject to income tax. So that is, that is certainly something to consider. Okay. Uh, thank you. And Barbara actually has two other questions here. Uh, I'll go mm -hmm. through them. Can you let money in the policy if you do not need all of it for the monthly benefit? And can you collect it later when needed? You certainly can, yes. So you can leave money in the policy, uh, which would allow the policy to pay out over a longer period of time. Uh, the risk there, and I mentioned a few statistics, one of them was that 85% of claims are less than five years. Um, and, and so we really believe in, in the client getting everything out of the policy that they can. And so we would advocate for them to take the full benefit, and if they don't need it, save it in their bank account so it's not in the policy. Uh, so they will not lose it if they were to pass away before, you know, exhausting what's in the policy. Okay, and Barbara's third question is, uh, did you say this, that this is an underwritten product? Correct. It is an underwritten product. Uh, different from your, your typical life insurance, it is a simpl simplified uh, underwriting process. And what simplified means is that we will not review medical records. Uh, there's no paramed or blood or urine requirement. Uh, once you apply, there's a simple application and then a telephone interview. Uh, the telephone interview with a client is, is normally about 30, 45 minutes long and it reviews medical history with the client over the phone. So we'll ask them about you know, maybe prior surgeries, any prescriptions they've taken over the past few years, uh, things that might be concerning when it comes to future long-term care need. Um, and then after that phone interview, it is a yes or no approval. Um, so I'll tell you that we run about an 80%, just over an 80% approval rate. For all applications in the nationwide, 80% are approved through that simplified process. Great, thank you. Uh, Jason asks, if you bank unused benefit each month, what happens to those balances upon death of insured? Yes, good question. Um, part of the risk of leaving that money in the policy is that if you pass away and that money is left in the policy, you lose it, right? If, if, if you've utilized the full amount of benefit that's there and you're really into that, that second bucket that is the long-term care benefit, if you leave it in the policy and you take out a lesser benefit each month, you're going to lose it. Uh, but if you bank it outside of the policy, either you pull it out of the policy personal account or you use that nationwide benefit bank that I mentioned which is outside of the policy, it is a uh, money market with nationwide outside of the policy, then that is available to you. So you pass away, you have you know, $80,000 saved up in that nationwide benefit bank, then that can go to your beneficiaries as a death benefit. But it is an account that belongs to you. Okay, and the final question here I have is from Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth wants to know, does Care Matters qualify under state partnerships? it does not qualify under state partnerships, no. Uh, so the hybrid products, the way that uh, they're, they're regulated under the Internal Revenue Code do not qualify uh, like the traditional long-term care products do. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining our presentation today. Please feel free to call us at URL for all of your single premium life and annuity needs. Should it be brochures, illustrations, or simply answers to your questions? Our toll-free number is 1-800-926-8875. My name again is Jason Collins, and I'm at extension 156. 
You can also ask for Joe Corio at extension 111 or Maria Adams at extension 102. Thank you all and have a wonderful day.